In our day-to-day -day lives, most of us don't even notice the presence of little creatures around us. As we grow up, we become oblivious to some tiny insects, but not all tiny creatures should be ignored. Some can kill you within a fraction of a minute, and some can make you ill for a lifetime. In this video, we count down five tiny animals that can kill you. For thousands of years, rodents have infested human civilization. While this has been no benefit to humans, rats derive plenty of perks from this arrangement, such as free food, water, and shelter. In most cases, the presence of rodents has been little more than a source of irritation. In certain periods throughout history, however, the problems initiated by rats and other critters have spilled over into epidemics. In some parts of the world, such problems are re-emerging right now. There are many diseases rodents carry, some are fatal, and others cause intense symptoms such as rashes and digestive disorders. The diseases can spread to humans through rat bites or scratches, contaminated food, furniture, air, and even via rodent-hosted fleas, ticks, and mites. The deadliest of epidemics caused by rodents is the bubonic plague, of which there have been three major outbreaks since the Middle Ages. The plague spreads to humans via rodent-nested fleas. Roughly two-thirds of infected individuals die within four days of exposure to the plague. The first known outbreak of the plague occurred under the reign of Byzantine Emperor Justinian I. Known as the Plague of Justinian, it broke out in Constantinople in the spring of 542, and spread from port to port, eventually engulfing the Mediterranean through Italy and Greece. The outbreak was brought on by the shipment of luxury items to and from Egypt, a trade partaking in the personal interest of Justinian, who became infected himself, killing up to 5,000 residents each day within the Byzantine capital. The plague had claimed at least 25 million lives by the end. The deadliest of outbreaks occurred during the late Middle Ages in what is now known as the Black Death, which wiped out a third of Europe's population between 1346 and 1353. Originating in Central Asia, the plague spread to Southeast Europe via trades along the Silk Road. It supposedly began with attacks on Mongos on Italian merchants, who returned to Europe as unknown carriers of the disease, passing the plague onto inhabitants of port towns along the Black Sea. The disease quickly spread throughout Europe as populations fled one stricken town after another. In medieval England, the Black Death was to kill 1.5 million people out of an estimated total of 4 million people between 1348 and 1350. No medical knowledge existed in medieval England to cope with the disease, after 1350, it was to strike England another six times by the end of the century. This animal might look harmless, but the slow loris is one of the only venomous mammals in the world. Its subtle nature makes it popular in the illegal pet trade, but this furry creature also carries a toxin that is released from the gland on the side of its elbows. If threatened, the loris can take the toxins into its mouth and mix it with saliva. The animal may also lick or rub its hair with this mixture to deter predators from attack. The toxin can cause death by shock in some people. With the animal's bite, hiss-like noises, sinuous moves, and even the way it defensively raises its arm above its head, Smithsonian wonders whether the loris might have evolved to mimic the cobra. Researchers also suggest that the slow loris's markings resemble those of the snake. On the 8th of April 2012, George Madani was on a wildlife surveying trip in Malaysian Borneo when he encountered a slow loris on a mango tree, but curiosity became his undoing as the loris bit him on the finger, which led to a series of agonizing events. Initially just painful, the effects of the bite soon manifested themselves into a full-blown anaphylactic reaction. His mouth swelled up, his chest and abdomen hurt, he felt nauseous, short of breath, weakened and agitated. Luckily for him, the remote location he was travelling in had a clinic stocked with adrenaline to alleviate his condition. Maricopa harvester ants are commonly found in most parts of Arizona, including Phoenix. It's perhaps most recognised as holding the record for having the most venomous sting of all insects. The ant is about 3 centimetres long, and it spends its entire life in the desert areas. Maricopa harvester ants have two pairs of membranous wings, yet they will not have them for the greater part of their life. They build gigantic nests that can measure more than 30 feet in diameter, and reach heights of 6 feet. However, these massive nests are only common if natural forces do not destroy them, or if the nest is not invaded by other ant species. 
Maricopa harvester ants contain the most toxic venom of all insects. The venom is a mixture of amino acids, peptides and proteins. The ant injects its venom after it attaches to its victim by clinging onto them with its pinches. After it's attached it will position itself so the stinger is facing towards the victim. The ant will then sting as many times as it can before it's dislodged or killed. The venom from the harvester ant is 12 times more powerful than that of a honeybee. A 4.5 pound rat could easily be killed by as few as 12 stings, and a 150 pound human could be killed by 350 stings. To get the same mortality rate from a bee, a human would have to be stung well over 10,000 times, without an allergic reaction taking place. While this may seem like a high number of stings, it's very low compared to the amount of stings from other insects. The most dangerous aspect of an attack is when the first ant stings its victims it will release pheromones that signals other members of the colony to come and attack as well. Records has named the Brazilian wandering spider the world's most venomous spider in multiple years. Brazilian wandering spiders are large, with bodies reaching up to 2 inches and leg spans reaching about 6 inches. The species vary in colour, though all are hairy, mostly brown and may have black spots on their bellies. These arachnids are called wandering spiders because they do not build webs, but wander on the forest floor at night, actively hunting prey. They kill by both ambush and direct attack. They spend most of their day hiding under logs or in crevices, and come out to hunt at night. They eat insects, other spiders and sometimes small amphibians, reptiles and mice. Brazilian wandering spiders venom is a complex cocktail of toxins, proteins and peptides, according to the Natural History Museum in Germany. The venom affects ion channels, and chemical receptors in victims' neuromuscular systems. After a human is bitten by one of these spiders, he or she may experience initial symptoms such as severe burning pain at the site of the bite, sweating and goosebumps. Within 30 minutes symptoms become systemic, and include high or low blood pressure, fast or slow heartbeat, nausea, abdominal cramping, hypothermia, vertigo, blurred visions, convulsions, and excessive sweating associated with shock. People who are bitten by a Brazilian wandering spider should seek medical attention immediately. In addition to immense pain and possible medical complications, the bite of a Brazilian wandering spider can deliver a long painful erection to human males. The venom boosts nitric oxide, a chemical that increases blood flow. Interestingly, several studies have looked at incorporating the venom into drugs for erectile dysfunction. Because of the toxicity of their bite and their alarming looking posture, these spiders have a reputation for being aggressive, but these behaviours are actually defence mechanisms. When threatened they will raise their first two pair of legs. This dramatic posture exposes the scarlet hair surrounding the fangs on some species. Their threatened stance serves as a warning. Fortunately it's very rare to find Brazilian wandering spiders in the UK, or anywhere outside their natural habitat in South America but a Brazilian wandering spider carrying a sack of thousands of eggs was found under a batch of bananas at a waitrose shop in South London in 2014. In the world there are between 1,700 and 2,000 species of scorpions organised in 13 taxonomic families. Although there is a large number of species, only a minimum amount approximately 35 are lethal to humans, particularly for people with health conditions, kids or seniors. According to scientists, these creatures have existed on Earth for more than 400 million years, but their evolutionary records still have many questions that need an answer. Their ancient history is a mystery, but some think that they come from aquatic animals slowly adapted to terrestrial life. Deathstalker scorpions are very small, often tan or reddish coloured with small weak pincers. The stinger tip and pincer tips can be darker, almost black coloured. Females are larger than males to accommodate reproductive tasks. Deathstalker scorpions can be found in dry desert areas, and dry scrublands in northern Africa and the Middle East. It prefers a dry climate, and makes its home in natural burrows or under stones. Scorpions may capture their prey with their pincers, but in the case of a deathstalker the pincers are fairly weak so a sting must be administered quickly. The size of the pincers of a scorpion can be a good measure of the potency of its venom. Scorpions with large powerful pincers have no need for powerful toxins. Scorpions with small weak pincers need to have strong poisons to kill their prey, and to ward off enemies. The Deathstalker scorpion is one of the deadliest scorpions in the world. 
Its tail is full of powerful venom. A Deathstalker Scorpion Sting is extremely painful and also causes paralysis and inability to move or feel part of the body. The scorpion uses this venom to hunt insects such as crickets, which are its main food source. It's not a common poison. It's composed of neurotoxins and a significant amount of cardiotoxins, which cause cardiovascular dysfunction, which can severely damage the body of a sick or allergic persons or children. In medicine, the Deathstalker venom has shown much potential for the treatment of human cancer tumors, thanks to a component called chlorotoxin. Other elements of the venom are useful against the effects of diabetes. So that was 5 tiny animals that can kill you. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more countdown videos.